guys, today we're going to be making the Iron Throne as a cake topper from Game of Thrones. So for my throne I'm going to sit it on a little stand that will just go on top of a cake. So I've got a 7 inch cake drum and a 6 inch cake drum and I've just got some grey fondant. Now it's a little bit marbled but that's fine for this effect that we're going to do. And we're just going to cover the board and we want to take it down the sides of the board as well as on the top and trim all the way around the edge. Going to do exactly the same with both boards. The marbling gives it a nicer stone effect as well. So when you mix in the grey, just don't knead all the colour in properly and it will give you this nice marbled effect. And let's divide this circle now. I've just got a straight ruler, you can use something else. Anything that's straight and clean to put an indent into our icing. So we're putting four lines in, dividing it into eight. And then I'm going to place that on top of our other cake board. Now if it doesn't stick on its own, just add a little bit of water to the top of the bottom cake board or a bit of edible glue. Give it a little push on. And then just using a knife, I'm just carrying on those lines from the top board down to the bottom board. And I've got quite a large circle cutter that we're just going to imprint another circle with. So it should look like that. Now I've got some greaseproof paper or parchment paper. And we're just going to screw it up and we're going to press into our fondant with this. And it's quite difficult to see the effect on camera but the harder you press on the deeper you're going to push the texture in and it just gives it a little bit more of a stone effect. Go all the way around and I've printed off a couple of images that I can use for guidance and I've printed them off to roughly the size that I want to do the chair. I'm making my chair in modelling paste so that it dries nice and firm. So taking a bit of the black, I want to try and roll it so it's about the same size as the chair itself. Now when I'm rolling it, I'm rolling it quite thin at the top, but the very bottom part I've left really chunky. Just pull down those bottom edges, almost there, to keep going till it pretty much covers that picture. So you can see that top is nice and thin. So I'm going to use this picture now as my template and we're going to cut out the swords around the top. Just using a sharp knife, go around the edge of your piece of modelling paste. Just make sure each of my swords get a little point at the top. And then once you've done that, I'll just try and score the lines in between those further down into the chair. And a lot of this is going to be covered when we add other swords. And we're just going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to decide which bit I want to be the back. And I'm just going to pinch in to try and lift. So I get a little bit in the middle that sticks out. So I'm not sure if you can see where I've pinched. It's left a little bit in the middle that comes out further. And I want a bit of shape now to this while it's drying. So I rested it on a piece of paper and I folded the top end of that piece of paper up so that when I've put this down, it's curved the very top of my chair backwards. And I've put a little folded piece of paper under each side, again to hold those side edges upwards slightly. And I'll let that be drying while we make a little cube shape for the seat part of the chair. Use the image as guidance for size. And I'm just going to pull the front bit down a little bit. Let's score in some lines. So they look like swords. Now, we are going to cover a lot of these, but just in case any of the underneath part of the chair shows through, we've got lines that look like swords. So while that's having a little bit of drying time, we're just going to add a bit of colour to our stone. So I've got a brown and a deep green that we're just watering down. I'm just using water for this. And I've got a piece of sponge. So I've just torn little bits out of my sponge just so that I don't have a really flat surface so that when I use it for painting, it will give me a really uneven finish. So I'm using down that watered green and brown and it is just it's edible luster dust we've got here and we're just going to dab that all over our stone or all over our base. We're going to stick that seat part we've made in the middle. I've just used a little bit of water. You can use edible glue and then we're going to press the back piece against it. Just make sure that back bit feels reasonably rigid before you stick it on. If it doesn't give it a little bit longer to dry and then we've just added a little piece of black modeling paste just in between the back and the seat just to stick them together. I've made sure it's nice and wet. And then we're going to run over with some metallic edible food colors. And I've got a silver and a copper color. And we're just going to go over the ends of those swords. You don't need to cover everything, just the pieces that are going to poke out. So we're just going to cover the top ends of the swords, the seat, and then the same at the back. Then let's go back to making a little bit more of the throne. So quite a thick square of your modeling paste now for each arm of the chair. And again, we're going to score some lines in, in the direction that you want those swords to go. Or you can crisscross them over, do that on both. So I've just done that on the outside edge of each of those chair arms. And let's put some little lines onto the top. So almost a teardrop shape for the front pieces. And we're going to cut that in half. 
and then stick each half onto the front of the chair, kind of coming off from the arm piece, at a slight diagonal outwards. Give it a good firm push on. Score in some more lines, repeat on the other side. One of those looks a little bit bigger than the other, so we'll just take a little bit off. I'm just, I've still got a little bit of a gap there, so I'm just gonna push another piece of modeling paste in there. Now, it's a bit untidy at the moment, but when we add our swords over the top everywhere, it's gonna neaten it all up. And I'm just gonna extend these pieces at the back that stick out just by pushing on an extra piece of modeling paste. And the same at the center of the back. So I'm not sure if this is what the throne actually looks like at the back, but I thought it looked nice. And it offers a bit of extra support so that my chair doesn't fall backwards. And now what we're gonna do is cut lots of strips for the swords. Try and cut a point at the end of each strip. And don't worry about them all being exactly the same size or thickness. Just wanna straighten them up. We don't want any bent swords. And just keep layering them across the front like that. So they haven't come all the way down to the bottom, just the top bit really that we're looking at at the moment because we're gonna put more swords over the top that cover that bottom bit. So you can do it with a knife or with scissors. So cut another point at the end of this one. And now these ones are gonna overlap and come further down. Keep going. And you can bring some of these down onto the seat itself now. So keep doing these till we've completely covered that back bit. And you can overlap them and crisscross them on the seat. And what we're going to do now is make some top ends for the swords. So I'm going to put a little bit of water where I want these bits to go. And I've got like a little mini sausage shape for the top of the handle. And then another piece just to go horizontally across the top of the sword. And then just a little ball at the very end. And you want to do this on all the, the last layer of swords that we've put on. So all the ones where the straight edges up at the top. Like that. And you can play around making them look different. And then what we're gonna do now is cover the back and the sides. So we're just continuing to add these strips everywhere over the chair. Have a look at your picture, which direction they go in and if they overlap and just keep adding them till you've filled out that chair. Anywhere that you want the end of the sword to be, again, just add a little ball for the sword handle up there and a thin piece that's gonna go across the top of the sword itself like that. So I've done that at the end of a few of the swords that kind of come across the top of the arm of the chair and down the sides of like the legs. So once you've completely covered the chair in swords, we can paint it up and it will look completely different once it's painted. So I've got some edible silver luster dust that we've just mixed with a little bit of clear alcohol and we're just gonna paint this all over. Now I'm just trying to catch just the tops of the swords so that the black still shows through around the edges so it looks quite shadowed in between all those swords. And you can add a little bit of the copper color and even a little bit of the green and brown that we used on the stone so the throne doesn't look too new and shiny. So that's all finished, ready to pop on top of a cake. Just be careful when you're picking it up that you don't catch any icing off the corner of the board like I have done. You can see a little bit missing just down here. The top is quite heavy so you will probably need to dowel your cake before sitting it on the top. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. If you liked the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.